Good evening, everybody. Once again, this is the UFC 150 post fight recap with Santa Bear Thunderheart. And tonight, well, um, the, the event was actually pretty good taking place in Denver, Colorado. Now, there were a couple of fights that weren't really that impressive. It was kind of dragging, but it's still, you know, the action was, was at least better than some of the action that was in UFC 149. And also, um, there was some controversy in the um, heavyweight, uh, not in heavyweight fight, lightweight um, championship fight between um, Benson Henderson and Frankie Edgar, um, too. In the re an immediate rematch, um, after, of course, Benson Henderson took the lightweight belt from Frankie Edgar in UFC 144. So, with that, I will read you the card and the results. So, here you go. Now, Nick Lenz versus E.J. Mitswaku, uh, sorry, um, Mitswaka. And then the winner is Nick Lenz, uh, via TKO. I mean, um, let's just put it this way. I mean, E.J., um, I don't know what was going on with him. He just wasn't in it for some reason. I mean, I mean Nick Lenz just really dominated him, with not only with um, stand-up strikes and stand-up battle, but he was also out wrestling him. He pressured him on. He just, just he basically had his way with him. I mean, for some reason, and EJ um, overall just got to a, to a point where he got pounded um, after he got his back, and he was just covering up. But then he even got hit to a point where he was just getting he wasn't even defending himself properly anymore, and nor was he even blocking. So, Nick Lenz is your winner. Congratulations on that awesome victory on your on his um. Featherweight's debut, by the way, so just to let you know that. And Dustin Pegg versus Chico Camus. And the winner is Chico Camus via unanimous decision um, UFC debut, a successful one at that. Um, let's be honest. Um, basically, we're all boiled down to like at least like the first two rounds. It will start the, at least during near the, around the first minute of the, of the round. They would start out with stand up battle. But, but each time, though, it goes to the ground. Um, Chico came has really got a lot of control through side controls and ground and pounds and even various submission attempts, but more or less ground and pound and a lot of controlling. Um, Dustin Pegg, and even then, when of course the th um, the third round came, um, Dustin Pegg took him down, but then Chico um, obviously then took basically bought. Um, let me see. Oh, actually, he actually turned it over and reversed it, and was actually was able to control. Dustin Pegg by that point too. So well, most of it was Chico Camus really controlling the action throughout the most of the, all the three rounds basically. I mean, most of the three rounds he was able to control it. So congratulations on um, his successful debut. Um, good through ground control and ground and pounding. So good job, good job. And <laughs> this next fight right right there is Ken Stone versus Eric Perez. And the winner by TKO in 17 seconds, mind you, is Eric Perez, a bantamweight. Actually, um, now he has set the record for the knockout, the fastest knockout in bantamweight um, weight history. So, um, congratulations, Eric Perez. I mean, basically, what it all boils down to, Ken Stone and Eric Perez were just swinging, basically just swinging at each other. It was just that Ken Stone hit him, had him hit first, but then, of course, Eric Perez clipped him. Um, really clipped him and knocked, actually knocked um, Ken Stone down and then of course he followed it up and started really hitting him and then really pounding him and pounding him and hitting him and just constantly hitting him in the head. Herb Dean, referee, stopped the fight, pushed him off. Of course, Ken Stone recovered, but as what Joe Rogan said, which actually made a very good point, is that if, of course, Ken, if, um, yeah, Ken Stone may have recovered after the, the fact that Eric was pounding on him, but Eric would have kept pounding on him if the referee, Herb Dean, did not make that stoppage, did not mis um, rescue Ken Stone for that. So I have to agree with Joe Rogan on this, and, and I really felt that he, Ken Stone would have been knocked the hell out. So congratulations. Excellent, excellent performance on Eric Perez. And in this next fight, um, Jared Hammond versus Michael um, Kuyper. And the winner is Michael Kuyper via TKO. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, Jared Hammond had some excellent heart and, and some chin. But boy, when Michael Kuyper kicked his leg and actually um, tore up his um, leg muscle and around in the, in the, in near the, um, in the calf, not in the, uh, actually near the calf area and near the knees, he was having, it was basically a one-legged man um, when it all boils down to it. And he, he's really having a hard time really to get, throwing his full 
power and, or any of his really um, accurate strikes towards um, Michael Kuyper. And so Kuyper was able to actually really come at him or really hit him so many times in the head. And I mean, he was even like wobbling and just, I mean, I thought he was gonna knock him out in the first round. I mean, I was actually surprised that Hammond actually um, lasted this long. And when the second round came, the same thing happened. Um, the guy was uh, wobbly, meaning Jared Hammond. And then of course, uh, Michael Kuyper just kept coming at him, started punching him and then knocked him down a few times kept hitting him, but he kept on coming back up, as Jared did, but after all, but Michael just kept persisting, kept persisting, he wanted that first UFC win, he kept persisting, kept persisting, and that persistence paid off, because once he hit him one more time with an uppercut, Jared went down, the referee stopped the fight, so Michael um, Kuyper, great job on your, and that actual um, victory that you have, so great work in the UFC, um, so congratulations on that. And this one was actually pretty good too um, in the first round fight. Um, as Dennis Bermudez versus Tommy Hayden. And the winner is Dennis Bermudez via a submission with a standing guillotine choke. And that means submission of the night. So congratulations, Dennis Bermudez. I mean, what it all boils down to is very simple. I mean, it was a pretty good fight overall. I mean, good striking battle, good ground game, and various things like that. Um, Tom, Dennis Bermudez obviously proven that he was very strong. He knew how to reverse um, different holds and things like that. But then Tommy Hayden had an advantage when he actually um, hit him with the knee in the, in the head, in the face. Dennis was a little bit of in, tr in trouble. And, and actually, Tommy Hayden thought he was going to actually get on his back and had him choked out. Meaning that, I mean, basically, um, you know, he had him on his back while he, while the guy was basically Bermuda was on top of him. He was trying to get him choked out like this. But he finally re was able to reverse it. And actually, what he was able to do was got back on his feet and did some more strikes, striking battle with him, but he was actually actually landed a kick to the sternum, knocked Tommy Hayden to the fence, and then was able to grab the guillotine, not fully with the guillotine with the arm, but just simply grab the neck. But how he was able to do it was he was actually able to grab the neck with a guillotine choke, twist, but not only like, did he actually like lift him up, but he also twisted it towards the 45 degree angle towards that side, where he was actually able to really twist the neck and get that leverage advantage. So, and that's what, of course, forced Hay um, Hayden to tap out. So congratulations, Dennis Bermudez, on an awesome submission victory there. And, Justin, this is one, this is actually the fight that I've actually um, missed more so, but I was able to see, uh, one of the only things I was able to see was the fact that um, Max Holiday w was your winner against Justin Lawrence when he threw it via TK TKO, that is, when um, basically he was able to, I just saw him pounding on Justin after he was able to throw a nice, um, not only did he was actually able to throw a nice knee to the sternum to actually wounded him, um, to hurt him, but he was actually able to hit him in the, in the gut um, to a side punch, um, actually like almost like an uppercut form when he fell down and that's when Justin went and pounded on him and TKO'd him, so congratulations on that. That was another part of the undo of, on control of the circumstances that got me to miss most of this fight. So congratulations anyway on Max Holloway, um, Holloway for this. And in this fight right there, it was, it was a good fight um, for Yushin Akami. But I will say this, um, he went against Buddy Rogers. And of course, Yushin Akami came out on top as a winner um, via TKO victory. Now, good job for Yushin Akami for coming back and actually winning it the first time um, in after the last um, two consecutive losses to two consecutive um, athletes as far as and fighters as far as um, Tim Bosch and Anderson Silva. However, um, Buddy Rogers took the fight on so short notice. A great job at him stepping up, but at the same time, it's not a bad thing on Yushin Akami's part. He did what he had to do. Buddy Rogers just wasn't doing a lot of things right, and then not to mention that he just. He was blocking like this when Yushin Akami was really nailing him and even within the first round, I thought it would have been over, but then the bell rang, so he was saved by the bell then. But in the second round, and especially in the middle of that, it was not the case. I mean, the same thing happened again. Yushin Akami had some ground control, even though Buddy Rogers now was out striking him and so forth. So Yushin Akami did not have any answers to his um, up striking battle, but let's be honest. When Yushin Akami put, took him to the ground, 
And that's when it was grinding and pounding time, and that's when it was all over. And he just kept pounding him and pounding him, and that's when um, Buddy Rogers just kept covering up like this. And that's what Joe Rogan says. I mean, yeah, even though you're blocking, you cannot just stand it. Just sit there still, letting the man hit you up like, beat you up like that. It just, it's just, it's not intelligent. And you, you really can get hurt that way even when you're blocking. So, um, once again, the referee made a great call, stopped the fight, and awarded Yushinakami the TKO victories. Congratulations. And another um, bout um, that was uh, not one of the greatest fights of all, but it was still pretty, it was, it was okay, and that is Jake Shields versus Ed Herman. And, and, and Jake Shields' middleweight debut, and successful one, because he actually won by unanimous decision against Ed Herman, despite the fact that Ed Herman had an advantage of being up in the altitude and training in the altitude, and Jake Shields did not, yet Jake Shields did a lot of control and ground control, where there is, um, Ed Herman was out striking him, but Ed Herman was trying to, I, I really felt like he was trying to tire him out. And I, and I think Joe, and actually that's what Joe Rogan was even contemplating on, and was trying to tire him out knowing that Jake Shields didn't really train, and yeah, he had a training advantage, but Jake Shields had a training advantage as far as jiu-jitsu. I mean, he's such a world-class athlete in that. He was able to control him, almost um, got him in a Kramar a couple times, but it just wasn't meant to be, and Jake Shields was gassing out. But Jake Shields just had enough reserve and enough technique to really control the fight. And even though it wasn't the most exciting, yeah, it was technical. Um, and people were booing. And, and I mean, rightfully so, because it, despite the fact that um, people um, may not know a lot of mixed martial arts and they boo a certain techniques and so forth, this fight really had not much energy to it. Um, just a lot of technical um, game and everything, yes. And but it just wasn't. There's the not that fire was not there. So um, even though Jake Shields had his mid middleweight debut, if he hopes to really be the best in the UFC, he's gonna have to really pick it up the intensity more. Um, if anything, I just it's just something about Jake Shields. It's just not happening. I'm just not feeling something from Jake Shields. And I hate to be. I don't, I'm not a hater of Jake Shields, mind you. I just don't feel that every time um, Jake Shields fights that he's really fighting with any full potential like he has in Strike Force or any other time in his life. So. I don't know, but congratulations anyway, um, Jake Shields, for your um, middleweight debut. And in this fight, now this was totally a 180 from the last two fights, as Donald Cerrone versus Melvin Gillard, their two, two training partners, uh, former training partners of Jackson Jim's, went at each other, and the winner is Donald Cerrone v. A Knockout. I mean, this was one of the most awesome knockouts I've seen in a while. Uh, Melvin Gillard basically nearly clipped him when he threw a nice leg hook. And actually, um, days of Donald Cerrone knocked him down. And Melvin Gillard, I think, to his credit, went after him. But I really, really think that I truly would have um, thought that Melvin would have stayed on him. And that's what I think he should have done. He would have gotten the victory if he would have stayed on him. But he backed up a little bit too long. Donald Cerrone got a chance to get um, his breath and got his wits about him. And after throw a nice round kick, it was actually... A nice round kick to the head that barely scratched, that barely hit him like this, but it hit him. But it wasn't just a really a foot that hit him; it was a shin that hit you. And man, shins can hurt you too, as well as you kick to the shin and it hurts. So, and of course, Melvin got dazed, and that's when Donald went, cracked it right in their face and knocked him out. And it was that was all done. Uh, it was all she wrote, folks. That's all it was to it. So, therefore, Melvin Gillard was knocked out, Donald Cerrone was victorious in the real, in the actual fight as well as 